NGV versus EV, developing an innovative strategy for future transport. The transportation sector is a key player in shaping global energy use and environmental sustainability. However, our roads are filled with fossil fuel-powered vehicles contributing to climate change, air pollution, and rising fuel costs. In response, the world is shifting towards cleaner and more sustainable transportation solutions. Among these solutions, two alternatives have gained attention. Natural gas vehicles, or NGVS, and electric vehicles, or EVS, these technologies represent milestones in the energy transition journey. NGVs and EVs each offer unique environmental, economic, and infrastructure advantages. Let's explore the role of natural gas vehicles in achieving cleaner air. NGVs run on compressed or liquefied natural gas, producing fewer harmful emissions than conventional vehicles. They gained popularity during the oil crisis of the 1970s, when countries aimed to reduce dependency on imported petroleum. Today, NGVs are used in public transport and commercial fleets worldwide, including Malaysia. The government promotes NGVs through infrastructure development and incentives. However, NGVs still face limitations such as limited refueling stations and reliance on fossil-based gas. Now let's turn to the rapidly evolving electric vehicle revolution. EVs eliminate tailpipe emissions entirely and can be carbon neutral when powered by renewable energy. The EV journey began in the 19th century but gained momentum in the 21st century with innovations in battery technology. In 2008, Tesla launched the roads to proving EVS can be fast and efficient. Since then, governments and industries have heavily invested in EV infrastructure. In Malaysia, EV growth is supported by the National Electric Vehicle Policy. Both NGVs and EVs are essential to a cleaner future, but strategies must be tailored to local contexts. Malaysia faces transportation issues such as urban air pollution, traffic congestion, and oil dependency. A dual strategy can address these. NGVs for public and heavy vehicles, EVS for personal mobility. NGVs can bridge the transition for sectors where EVs are not yet viable, such as long-haul trucking. Meanwhile, EVs can be scaled for city cars and family vehicles as charging access grows. With the right incentives and infrastructure, adoption of both technologies can accelerate. Policymakers must integrate both into sustainable urban planning efforts. Globally, many countries are aligning NGVs and EVs to achieve carbon neutrality goals. Norway, for example, has set a deadline for new car sales to be all electric. China, the largest EV market, is investing in charging infrastructure and battery production. India, with its vast public transport network, is promoting EVS for last mile connectivity. Malaysia, too, can become a leader by adopting a balanced and forward-looking transport strategy. The transport sector must evolve, powered by innovation, policy, and public awareness. This paper aims to offer insights into an innovative strategy using both NGVs and EVs. Sustainable mobility is not a choice, it's a necessity for future generations. The time for cleaner transportation is now. Let's embrace NGVs and EVS not as rivals but as partners in a cleaner journey. Each has a role to play in shaping a sustainable transportation ecosystem. Our roads can be cleaner, our skies clearer, and our future brighter. Together, we drive change. VS and EVS, moving Malaysia and the world towards a cleaner future. Comparative analysis. Last week, the Malaysian government announced that it aims to decarbonize its transportation sector, which accounts for almost a quarter of the country's greenhouse gas emissions. To achieve this goal, the government is looking into two main solutions, natural gas vehicles, or NGVs, and electric vehicles, or EVs. NGVs emit considerably less CO2, NOx, SOx, and PM2.5 when compared to petrol or diesel vehicles. As such, they are considered to be an environmentally friendly option and ideal for use in public transport, especially in urban areas where emissions can be a major problem. NGVs are powered by natural gas, which is considerably cheaper than petrol or diesel. In fact, it works out to be around 56 cent per kilometer versus 95 cent per kilometer for petrol and 98 cent per kilometer for diesel. NGVs were first introduced in Malaysia in the 1990s and since then, a lot of infrastructure has already been built, mostly by Petronas. 
By the end of 2023, there will be over 900 public chargers and the target is to reach 10,000 by 2025. These chargers include AC and DC fast chargers as well as battery swaps. The government is also pulling in the private sector to help build this infrastructure. For example, TNB has partnered with Petronas to install EV chargers at petrol stations nationwide. So while the EV charging network in Malaysia is still far from comprehensive, it is rapidly catching up. Range anxiety or the fear of running out of charge is a real problem for EVs, especially in a country like Malaysia where distances can be long. However, this problem can be mitigated through a combination of measures, including the development of more robust charging infrastructure, the production of more locally assembled EVs with longer ranges, as well as the introduction of battery swapping services. Today, there are approximately 200 CNG stations, the majority of which are located in the Klang Valley. NGVs offer cost benefits and a moderate reduction in emissions, making them a suitable option for the short term, say for example, replacing a company's existing fleet of vehicles. However, EVs are clearly the better strategic choice for Malaysia's long-term sustainability goals because of its zero tailpipe emissions, falling battery costs and strong policy support. The government should therefore focus on building up EV infrastructure as well as integrating more renewable energy into the grid. What do you think? Which option do you think is better for Malaysia? Do let us know in the comments below. Be sure to stay tuned for more. However, growth has stagnated in recent years due to low demand and the government's shift in policy focus. Furthermore, NGV infrastructure is not very useful in rural areas or for long-distance logistics. However, NGVs are powered by fossil fuels. Therefore, they are not a net-zero solution. There is also the issue of methane leaks during transportation and distribution as well as usage, which negate some of the emission benefits. So overall, while NGVs offer a decent reduction in emissions, it doesn't really align with Malaysia's goal of achieving net zero by 2050. So in this video, we'll be doing a comparative analysis between NGVs and EVs based on three important focus areas. Number 1. Environmental Impact Number 2. Economic Impact and number three, infrastructure readiness. We will then conclude which option is the most sustainable and practical path forward for Malaysia. Let's begin. First, we'll look into the environmental impact of both options. Next up, let's take a look at EVs. Environmentally speaking, EVs are much better than NGVs because they have zero tailpipe emissions. This makes them ideal for improving urban air quality, which is a major concern in big cities like Kuala Lumpur. Moreover, as Malaysia moves towards more renewable energy, EVs will become even more carbon neutral. Some people might argue that EVs will just displace coal emissions from the tailpipe to the power plant. But this is not really true because with renewables, we can significantly reduce the carbon intensity of electricity generation. On top of that, with V2G or vehicle-to-grid technology, EVs can even send power back to the grid during peak hours, further reducing the need for fossil fuel-based power plants. Finally, with proper battery recycling, EVs will have a much lower environmental impact compared to NGVs over their lifetime. To conclude, while both NGVs and EVs can reduce emissions compared to conventional vehicles, EVs are clearly the better option if we want to truly go green. Let's now move on to the second point, which is the economic impact of both options. Now let's take a look at EVs. The upfront cost of EVs is indeed higher, but it has been declining in recent years due to improvements in battery technology. In fact, according to Bloomberg NEF, the average EV is expected to cost only slightly more than a conventional vehicle by 2026. The main cost saving of EVs comes in its long-term maintenance because there are fewer moving parts. EVs require less maintenance, resulting in total ownership costs that are about 60% lower than conventional vehicles. Furthermore, electricity prices are much more stable compared to oil, which is subject to market volatility. As such, it can be argued that EVs are the more economical option in the long run. Budget 2023 has also introduced very attractive financial incentives for EVs, including import duty exemptions and sales tax exemptions of up to 100%. All in all, these incentives are expected to boost EV adoption in Malaysia. Next, we'll look at the infrastructure required to support both NGVs and EVs. 
On the other hand, EV infrastructure is still in its nascent stage in Malaysia, although the government is working hard to build up the necessary network of chargers. So in conclusion, after analyzing all three focus areas, it is clear that NGVs and EVs are very different from each other. Proposed Solution As Malaysia moves toward a greener future, our strategy offers a focused approach to expand the adoption of electric vehicles, or EVs, nationwide. First, let's look at the concept. Our proposal is to establish EV-driven green corridors that facilitate seamless, safe, eco-friendly and connected travel across peninsular Malaysia. These corridors will be equipped with fast charging infrastructure, renewable energy systems and smart mobility services. We will start building these corridors from major urban areas, expanding them to intercity highways and eventually to rural regions. This approach builds on Malaysia's existing highway network, ensuring connectivity throughout the country. We will focus on towns with populations exceeding 100,000, aiming to provide them with comprehensive EV facilities. This phase will see the combination of renewable energy sources such as solar and wind, power with the charging network to create a sustainable and resilient system. We will also continue to encourage local manufacturing of EVs and their components, fostering the growth of a domestic EV industry. By 2030, we estimate that it will help avoid up to 5 million tons of CO emissions annually, contributing to a cleaner environment. By investing in EV-driven green corridors, Malaysia can position itself as a leader in sustainable mobility, drive economic growth create new job opportunities and most importantly, provide a healthier environment for its citizens. Let's embrace this vision and work together to make it a reality. Thank you. The EV-driven economy is projected to add over 5 billion Malaysian ringgits to the nation's GDP, fostering economic growth and creating more than 10,000 new job opportunities. Notably, the adoption of EVs in rural areas will enhance mobility reduce health issues associated with air pollution, and improve the overall quality of life for residents in these regions. To stimulate EV adoption, we will offer financial incentives for community charging, encouraging individuals with solar panels and battery storage systems to provide charging services to the public. Why are we proposing this strategy? Environmentally, EVS produce zero tailpipe emissions helping to reduce air and noise pollution, thus improving overall environmental quality. They contribute to cleaner air, mitigate climate change, and reduce Malaysia's carbon footprint. Key players such as the Ministry of Transport will be responsible for establishing the necessary regulations and planning frameworks. The Ministry of Finance will play a pivotal role in providing the necessary funding and incentives to support EV adoption. Tanaga Nasional Burhad and its subsidiary Gentari will be instrumental in developing the energy infrastructure, including the installation and maintenance of charging stations. Automotive companies such as Proton, Paradua and Tesla will be encouraged to invest in research and development as well as the deployment of innovative EV models. Local governments and universities will be engaged to secure community support, provide research and educational resources, and promote public awareness campaigns. Moreover, while Evave may have a higher upfront cost, their operating cost is significantly lower in the long run due to factors such as cheaper electricity compared to petrol or diesel and reduced maintenance requirements. This cost-saving aspect positions EVS as an economically attractive alternative for consumers and businesses. Furthermore, Malaysia's infrastructure is rapidly improving. As of today, there are more than 900 public charging points nationwide. Our plan will unfold in three distinct phases. Phase 1 from 2025 to 2026 will focus on urban areas. We will deploy EV fleets in major cities like Kuala Lumpur, Penang, Ipoh, Johor Bahru, and Kota Kinabalu. 
Additionally, we will launch pilot programs in collaboration with e-hailing services and delivery, firms such as food delivery services and logistics, companies to promote the use of EVS for ride-sharing and last-mile delivery solutions. This phase will lay the foundation for EV adoption in public transportation and essential services. Phase 2 from 2026 to 2028 will expand the infrastructure along major highways and into rural towns, ensuring wider coverage and accessibility. In the third and final phase from 2028 to 2030, we will move toward full integration. To ensure the success of this strategy, collaboration among stakeholders is crucial. Upon successful implementation, our strategy is poised to deliver significant benefits. In conclusion, our proposed solution presents a transformative approach to address Malaysia's transportation challenges. Team Dynamics We decided to focus on electric vehicles, or EVs, as a solution to promote sustainable transportation. This required not only technical knowledge in engineering and science, but also strong teamwork, effective leadership, and clear task delegation to successfully complete this group assignment. At the start of the project, the leadership roles were assigned to one team member who acted as the project coordinator. This person ensured that we stayed on track to meet our objectives. They organized regular meetings, facilitated discussions, and made sure everyone was on track to complete their tasks. We recognized that challenges were a natural part of the process, and we embraced them as opportunities to learn and grow. This involved analyzing data, discussing potential risks, and considering various viewpoints. Through these discussions, we gained a deeper understanding of the issue and were able to make more informed and balanced decisions. As the project progressed, leadership roles evolved each member took charge of different segments of the project based on their expertise. Embracing innovation was what truly set our team apart. Each member brought unique ideas and solutions to the table, which we integrated into our final strategy. Despite facing challenges, we demonstrated resilience and a commitment to working through disagreements to achieve our objectives. The lessons learned in this process will undoubtedly shape our approach to future group projects and professional endeavors. Our leadership model encouraged creativity and allowed us to approach the project from various perspectives, leading to a more comprehensive and effective plan for promoting EV adoption in Malaysia. We carefully considered each team member's strengths and areas of expertise when assigning roles. We leveraged tools like Google Drive to share documents, Teams for weekly meetings, and WhatsApp for quick updates and informal chats. Our goal was always to make decisions based on research and evidence, which helped us maintain a cohesive and respectful environment throughout the project. Firstly, we had designated leaders. Secondly, we had effective task delegation. Task delegation was crucial to our success. Lastly, we also focused on innovation and creativity. In conclusion, our team's success can be attributed to our shared leadership, clear task delegation, and open communication.